but the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this one went down to his home justified rather than the other. For anyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but who humbles himself will be exalted. Good morning. Welcome to a short biblical reflection on the Gospel according to Luke chapter 18, verses 9 up to 14. I entitled it Prayer of the Pharisee and the Tax Collector. It is the Gospel reading for the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year C. In the introduction, I just read the concluding part of this passage of the Gospel. Now let me read the beginning. He also told this parable to some who were convinced of themselves that uh, they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. A Pharisee standing was uh, praying thus to himself, God, I thank you, but I am not like other people, thieves, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. This parable uh, is addressed to those who were convinced and translated here more literally than the many other translations, because many translations render that in the sense who trusted in themselves or were confident in themselves. The Pharisees, in fact, were really convinced of being righteous. Uh, St. Paul, in his letters, he is addressing that issue because by observing detailly uh, all the prescriptions of the law, they were convinced of being righteous and uh, in that way they would uh, pretend uh, to uh, be those who qualified to be admitted to the kingdom uh, of heaven. In fact, uh, similar a situation we find in the same gospel according to Luke in chapter 15 when Jesus is addressing uh, one long parable composed of three parables in fact to the Pharisees and the scribes who complain that he receives sinners and tax collectors and eats them. At the end of the first parable of the lost sheep there is the statement just so I tell you there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous ones who need no repentance. Because the Pharisees consider themselves the righteous ones and uh, consequently they didn't feel any need of repentance because they were perfect. And now uh, this uh, perfect person, this Pharisee, uh, now is praying also in elevated way, uh, also translating this more literally in verse 11. The Pharisee standing was praying thus to himself. We can understand not only that like he was saying to himself, but the prayer itself uh, is directed to himself to boast himself uh, or even to give him more conviction of how good he is. And then he gives thanks to God and uh, uh, lists three categories, thieves, unrighteous and adulterers. Thieves and adulterers refer to, to the two commandments of the Ten Commandments. Do not steal, do not commit adultery. And in the middle, uh, there is this term which I'm, it translated uh, also very literally to reflect it as antithetic to the righteous ones themselves they were considering themselves as righteous ones now he calls other people unrighteous like this tax collector and uh, contrary the tax collector he's standing somewhere far off uh, doesn't dare even to lift up his eyes to heaven but was beating his breast saying god be merciful to me a sinner uh, very big contrast in those two prayers and consequently in conclusion Jesus makes that uh, this elevated uh, boastful prayer 
of the Pharisee is not uh, accepted, is not received. He didn't go home uh, justified because he was uh, exalting himself about the, the others, despising others. But this humble uh, sinner, this tax collector, uh, went justified. His prayer was uh, accepted. We can read our parable also from the perspective of the text which precedes, in particular, the one which we uh, heard last Sunday about the persist persistence in uh, prayer at the beginning of chapter 18, verses 1 up to 8. This parable of the unjust judge and uh, the widow who was coming to bother him with a request concludes with the statement, with the question, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? From the perspective of that parable, faith uh, was found uh, in the case of this widow, but contrary, uh, there was lack of faith uh, in the case of uh, this unjust judge who also declared himself as uh, uh, not fearing God. And now, this, the same question can be also linked to our parable, because clearly on one side we have that sinner who believes in God, he's sinner, he's convinced and uh, conscious of what he did, therefore he's praying with sincerity uh, to God asking to be forgiven and he uh, gets uh, the declaration that he was justified, he's forgiven. But on the contrary, the Pharisee also was convinced that he's believing. However, there is a problem of faith because he has a wrong image of God, uh, which uh, then has also consequences uh, how he behaves and how he treats uh, other people. Therefore, his prayer is not received because he is not uh, believing properly. The one who is sinner, though he is sinner, but he believes properly, he gets justified. And the Pharisee who believes wrongly doesn't get justified. I would like to wish you a nice day, a nice uh, way, a nice, uh, a nice reflection on this passage of the Gospel. God bless you.